And I think about that a lot when I think about where he ranks all time. I think about the fact that, you know, he went to the Heat, joined a super team, won probably the first player-constructed super team we've ever seen, were three all-stars, two superstars, arguably the two best players in the game at that time, went and joined on the same team. we never seen anything like that. And the fact that they only got two out of four, I sometimes hold that against them. But he still got two rings there. And then he left, and he waited for the Cavs to, to gain some nice high draft picks and get some great talent in there. And then he went back home. And then he was set up perfectly to have a run there. And then he left, went to the Lakers. They weren't perfectly set up, but they had some great young pieces that he could see they could probably trade. And they got it for an AD. And since then, this year, they've been in a great position. So he's put himself in some great positions throughout his career. He's done it himself. He's moved team to team, and he's done it. And some people might hold that against him. I'm sure they will. They'll say he went to the Heat, and Ray Allen saved him, and he played with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. And then he went back home with Kyrie, and then they got Kevin Love. He has had super teams his whole career since he left the Cavs the first time. But the way you got to think about it is all the other great players of all time. Kareem when it went to the Bucks, had played with Oscar Robertson. Then he went to the Lakers and played with Magic Johnson and James Worthy. And then MJ. Didn't have a great team his first few years. And then he got Scotty in there. And then they got Dennis Rodman in there. And they got great role players like Kukoc and Kerr to hit the shot. And Horace Grant, who was a borderline all-star. He had himself a great team. Larry Bird got to the Celtics, one of the best organizations. Kevin McHale with him. Robert Parrish, all that. LeBron just wasn't fortunate enough to get drafted to one of those teams. The team he got drafted to was Cheeks. And when he was there, they didn't win a finals, but he did his part carrying them there. Go watch that that Pistons series, or that Pistons game, where he scored some like 29 points of, 29 straight points for the Cavs. There was 27 out of 29. I need to go check up myself exactly. Against Tayshaun Prince and those boys... That man was taking it all for himself, playing with Mo Williams, Boozer, and just a bunch of not even good role players. So it's an internal thing where it's like he's put himself on these great situations, but the guys when guys that he was that he's going up against all the time, they just happen to be in them, be in them naturally, and you can't put him against them for putting them taking it upon himself. And not being looked at as one of these guys that didn't get enough rings because they just didn't have good teams. And now we got to get to where LeBron's going to be all time after this. I t- I turn off the TV as soon as the game is over so I could get this pot out quick as possible. So I'm, But I'm assuming they're giving him the MVP trophy right now. Clearly deserved it. And even if he didn't and it was close, they were going to give it to him because... Just the storyline behind it all. They were just going to give it to LeBron if it was close. And I don't even think it was very close. I think LeBron clearly deserved the MVP. And continuing with that, another MVP on his on his uh, resume. You got to look at where he'd be all time. Before this, I wasn't mad at those guys that would have him 7, 6, 8. Because there's so many great players of all time. That's what I say to people that get mad at that. It's so like, I, before this, I would say... I can't be mad at anyone that has magic over LeBron. I can't. Even Larry Bird. I don't have Larry Bird over LeBron, but I could see it, kind of. For me, he's definitely on the Mount Rushmore now. I got him top three. I got him with Kareem and MJ. And now, I'm not a LeBron fan. It's not the easiest to say. But I can't be mad at anyone that has him as the best of all time. I still don't. I still got MJ and Kareem slightly ahead of them. But I can't be mad. They're, it's close. It's slight. The, way I, the reason I give Kareem an edge, because I know a lot of people aren't going to give Kareem the edge. People don't want to talk about Kareem. The way the reason I give Kareem the edge is people sleep on him because he's not, he's not a player that's out there. He's not most likable. He's never been flashy. People, a lot of people just don't like him. He hasn't 
he's, he doesn't have the most exciting game, just sky hooks. People aren't trying to play like Kareem. People don't wear his shoes. People don't watch his highlights and try to emulate that. There's no players, basically since he's came in, that have modeled the game up to Kareem. And so many have tried to be like Mike, and I'm sure so many will try to be like Braun. Even saying that, you got to look at Kareem's career. That man played four years in college. So when you think about his NBA accomplishments, you got to take into the fact that everyone was playing college back then, and that takes away some years he would have had dominating the NBA. And he dominated college like no player ever has when he was in college. Then he went to the NBA. Five MVPs. Six rings. Just that right there. You think, that's got to be the best player of all time. As many rings as Mike. Five MVPs. Most most points ever scored. And having played four years in college and being the best college player of all time. I won't put him best. I won't put him best of all time, because he still needed someone giving the ball, and he was a great defender, but he wasn't an all-time defender. He wasn't the best big all-time defensively, and by the end, when he was getting those getting those rings and still being a good impact player, by the end of his career, he just didn't have it in to be a great defender. So I've got him number two, but still six rings, five MVPs, I, and. Four years less than Braun could have had because he back then everyone was going to college. Have you just got to still put him above Braun? Braun could move past him. Braun could move past him. He's got some years left. Let him get another really impressive ring. And I changed some things, but I've got him number two. And then MJ, just the fact that he never crumbled does it for me. LeBron still, he'll always have the Maverick series where he just crumbled in the NBA Finals. He scored eight points. Not in the fourth quarter, not in the second half, in a whole Finals game. You know what the least points MJ's ever scored in the Finals? I did my homework. 22. The least MJ's ever scored. LeBron scored eight in that Mavericks Finals. In the Finals where you could, where if it was on the Cavs and they were just triple teaming and his other players couldn't hit it, okay, that's fine. But in the Finals where... He had plenty of other players to take the pressure off of him. He had Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, role players, shooters, and he just crumbled. And zone, zone had J.J. Barea and guys like that on him at times, and he just wasn't ready for the moment. And as much as he's completely redeemed himself, that shouldn't be a main thing people talk about when they talk about LeBron. It shouldn't be one of the first things you talk about. But when you have to compare him to Michael Jordan, you've got to split these hairs you got to talk about when LeBron's failed. And MJ, just the fact that he's 6-for-6 six six in the finals. You could say, oh, but losing before then, so that's better than to you than getting to the finals and losing. If there was a series where Michael Jordan completely crumbled in the playoffs and his team was supposed to win, sure, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. But there wasn't. The one you could maybe say is when they lost to the Magic, but that was when he just came back. Short in the year, he wasn't back in basketball shape. From what I wasn't there watching, obviously, but from what I've looked at, what I've seen, there was never a series like that where Michael just was supposed to win. He had the more talented team, and he just played horribly. He had a game where he scored eight points, and just throughout the whole series, he played badly. And Braun played badly. Not just he played badly for LeBron. He played bad for an NBA player in that finals. At, at least in that that game three, I think we scored eight, and for the most of it, he played like a not great NBA player. And Mike, just the fact that he's done it, he did it six for six, not a bad moment, played great in all those finals, and had good competition, Malone, Stockton, not amazing, not Warriors competition. You know, people will say you didn't have to go against Warriors. Sure, if LeBron had won that one against the Mavericks and he lost those Warriors ones, I'd probably have to give it to him. But I've got to give it to accomplishments and what they did on the floor. I can't just give it to, you know, regular season to regular season, talent, ability, just numbers that they rack up. Because, again, with the with the college things, LeBron's going to end up having the most points, everything, because of durability and because he never had to go to college. <clears throat> he never did go to college. It was before they instituted one and, one and done. And it was after when it was just assumed everyone was going to college for three or four years. So we got he got lucky in terms of being in that era where, where people that just look at NBA stuff, he's going to be able to benefit off of that. But 
All that being said, because I know LeBron fans that want to have him go are going to take this as some negative LeBron talk. All that said, he's definitely on the Mount Rushmore now. And I don't think you could take that as hate if you have him that high. Top three. Not even just Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore is four. I have him clearly 100% my top three. And this is a guy that isn't a LeBron fan. And I'm not mad at you if you have him number one. That's just the reason I have him number three. And his career is still going. It, I'm, I have an open mind. I, my mind is always open to things. I'll never just count something out, just decide on something. LeBron, he's at least got another good year. Great, he at least has another great LeBron year left in him. He probably has two or three. And if he wants, he probably has six or seven good years in the NBA left. He can do a lot of things in that still. He has a lot of time left. He can move up. But I've got him top three now. And this finals helped that case. Wasn't the most impressive finals in terms of opponent and the fact that they didn't get him down in four and five. But his performance, it did move him up. Especially the last two games, closing it out. He's definitely gone clutch at this point of his career. No doubt about it.